For the last several years, Rabbi Guzik has gotten me for my birthday and anniversary the same gift every single time. And I never open it. I get it and I put it on the kitchen counter and it sits there until the next one comes and I don't open it again. You might be asking what that gift is. It's electronic key finders. So I can find my keys. She bought me every single type of brand that you can name. And I won't open it because I'm adamant that wherever those keys are, I can find them myself. But as our children have gotten older and we are in different places, especially after school activities and throughout the week, we have to know where everybody is. And so finally, we have one of those apps on the phone that we all track where everybody is at all times. And this time, the app came with a free key finder and I put it on my keychain. And I loved it. It was amazing. This week, I'm able to find my keys by touching a button on my phone. I'm able to find my phone by touching a button on my keys. I tried it at home. I put it under the sofa, the bed, the kitchen table. It's foolproof. I came to the office. I put it under my desk. I put it anywhere in Sinai Temple. I can find it. And guess who lost their keys this week? <laughs> Rabbi Guzik. I didn't tell that story to place blame on anybody. In fact, Rabbi Guzik gave me permission to tell you that story. But it was like hiding the Afi Coleman. It was really an amazing experience. <laughs> but I did learn a lesson. That when we're looking for something like our keys, which are a valuable part of our life, you have to be ready to find your own keys. In essence, if you're going to transform yourself, Somebody else is not going to do it for you. But you have to transform yourself. I'm not going to do a survey of how many people lose their keys here each week. But in fact, this is a true story, and I plan to give the sermon on Wednesday. And when I came in, in the middle of the service, Jacob Gershbach says, somebody lost their keys. So actually, if you did lose your keys, I have them, and please come to see me after the service. This is not a prop. This is real. But I think it happened to us this week in the exact moment that it should have because as the cantor and the choir chanted so beautifully the blessing of Birkat HaChodesh, the new month of Elul, and as he said, that's the last blessing that we're going to get for a new month because Tishrei for Rosh Hashanah, we know it's coming, and the rabbis say, you don't need a blessing for the month that you know it's coming, but Elul, you have to know which day it's going to be. And the month of Elul is not just about physical preparation, but we know most importantly it is about spiritual preparation. Our entire routine ritually changes during the month of Elul. If you come to the Minyan in the mornings starting on Tuesday, you're going to see each morning and evening we recite Psalm 27. It's the Psalm of Repentance that will be chanted all the way through the holiday of Sukkot. And most notably, and most fun for our younger children, we sound the shofar. We don't wait until the new year, but for an entire month except the last day of Elul, we sound the shofar. And the rabbis ask, but why? Why an entire month of sounding the shofar? Maybe a couple days before, a week, but an entire month of Elul. And there are two reasons within the Talmud that I want to share with you this morning. The first is that the month of Elul coincided with the time that Moses went up the mountain of Mount Sinai to get the first set of tablets. And the Israelites at the time maybe were not so great at math, but they miscalculated the 40 days. And when they didn't see Moses come down for their count of 40, we know what happened. They built the golden calf, they sinned, and that led to the rest of our Jewish history. And so what happened, the rabbis say, when Moses went up the second time? They sounded the shofar. And from that moment, they should count the 40 days. Moses comes back with a second set of tablets, which we have today. The second one is the more confusing, and I say that no pun intended, but it is in fact about confusion. We blow the shofar the entire month of Elul in order to confuse the prosecuting angel that will come down because we want to be in the Sefer HaChayim, the book of life. And so if we keep blowing the shofar, the angel will come down and not know what day it is. Maybe Rosh Hashanah is in the middle of Elul, maybe it's after 
And so we go over beyond the call of duty of how many times we blow the shofar. And so we confuse that angel to make sure we are written in the book of life. And so for a moment, I want to speak about confusion. Because even though that confusion may confuse the prosecuting angel of the Jewish people, it is in fact confusion that leads to moments of transformation in our lives as well. The Hasidic story is told of the Baal Shem Tov whose disciple, Rabbi Zev, was going to have the honor of blowing the shofar in Rosh Hashanah that year in his community. We know it's a beautiful honor. In fact, if you ask Rabbi Guzik and I, it was the most difficult test to take in rabbinical school. You have to learn how to blow the shofar. It's not easy. And if you're not a trumpet player or a type of brass player, it's even that much more difficult. And so this Rabbi Zev, he prepared and prepared and prepared. And the Baal Shem Tov told Rabbi Zev, this month of Elul, I want you to prepare kavanot, different meditations of the shofar. And day after day, Rabbi Zev took that responsibility very seriously. He learned so much about the shofar, not just the sounds, but the deep meaning behind it. And he prepared each of these kavanot on a big sheet of paper. He stuffed the sheet of paper into his pockets. So on Rosh Hashanah, when he would come on the bima, he would not only blowing the sound of the shofar, but he would have the meditations of his heart on behalf of the congregation. The morning of Rosh Hashanah arrived. Rabbi Zev stood up on the bima. And for some reason, he felt in his pockets the kavanot had disappeared. And he stood nervously. Now it was just going to sound like any other horn, any other shofar. He blew the shofar according to what he had to do, but not what he wanted to do. His mind went blank. And afterwards, the Baal Shem Tov came up to his student. He, student thought he was going to scold him. And the Baal Shem Tov said, Rabbi Zev, that was the most extraordinary shofar playing I have ever heard in my life. And he said, but Rabbi Baal Shem Tov, it's not what he said. No, 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 no. Just stop. And he told him a story. He said, in the king's palace, there are many gates and doors leading to many different hallways. The palace keepers have a very big ring of keys. And each key opens a different door. But there is one key, the Baal Shem Tov said, that fits all the locks. It's a master key for all. He said, the kavanot, the meditations that you learned over this month of Elul, those are the keys that open the separate doors. But Rabbi Zev, the one key that unlocks all the doors to the divine palace, the master key, is a broken heart. The master key is a broken heart. This past year, individually, collectively, and throughout the world, we are filled with broken hearts. People are walking around with these broken hearts, not recognizing, however, that this can be, as we saw this morning with Bishop, moments of transformation, a moment to open up our soul and change our world. On Tuesday evening, some of you were with Rabbi Guzak and I in Culver City at the Nova Festival exhibition. When you walk through those halls, it's heart-wrenching. It breaks your heart over and over and over again. If you haven't gone, there's still time, and please go. In fact, on Thursday evening, there will be a night of Christian allies with a group called October 7th Christians. Patricia Heaton will be there, and two days later, she will be here speaking from this Bema next week about her experience. But at the end of that tour, when we saw the artifacts and watched the videos, we then heard from a 26-year-old Nova Festival survivor named Itai. And he told us his story of the survival. Six of his friends that he went to that festival were killed because they went one way, but because he, Itai stayed back to help a young girl who was in a panic attack and had to go a different way, that saved his life. He explained that during those days and weeks after, in his heart he felt like he had no will to live until he came home and he saw his grandfather and he gave him a hug like he had never felt before. And then Itai explained to us that his grandfather was a Holocaust survivor from the Ukraine. 
And Itai said that if my grandfather could go through five years of Holocaust, what I experienced on that day, I'm ready to tell my story too and change the world. He told us on Tuesday that that was only the second time that he has now publicly shared his story. He's on his way back home to Israel on Monday. But we watched and we listened to a broken heart. And all I could think about was how that was the key. That was his call of the shofar to reopen the doors, not only of his world, but all of ours. So I could share with you today and you can share with another person when you leave these doors. Elul is here. We heard when the cantor chanted that Birkata Chodesh, the melody, the haunting melody of Kol Nidre and the joyful melody of Rosh Hashanah. On Monday evening, we're going to be just one month away. But we can find our keys now. We can track our keys by putting that device on our souls and not on our keychain. Because we realize from the Baal Shem Tov and from Rabbi Zev and from Itai, that this is not a time to be alone. We don't find our keys by ourselves, I learned the hard way, but we find our keys together. And we decide when we do where we need to go so that when we come back here next month, and God willing, many times before, on that first night of Tishrei and this beautiful 5785, we will not be scrambling out the door without our keys, but we will have them in our hand. Open that door and walk into a year ahead with full hearts mended together. Shabbat Shalom. Amen.